Good morning. Today in our service, we think about stories. The story of Jesus' two friends meeting him on the road to Emmaus and not recognising him. The story of Jesus' followers sharing food with him and hearing his plan for their futures. And we consider what might be the next chapter in our individual life stories as we move beyond Easter. Come, trust in the Creator, who transforms our distress and anger with silence and searching. We meet in the light of a new day, welcoming the Word of God. The presence of heaven brings peace to this space and time, and our hearts and minds wait for heaven's purpose to be revealed. How great is the love that God has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, siblings of Jesus. As we give thanks for the resurrection power of love in our lives, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, stepping into the turmoil of our life, you bring peace. You bring your risen presence. Your calm voice chases away the darkness and distress of doubt and fear, bringing new light and insight to life and death. In an upper room, you make the extraordinary experience of resurrection an everyday encounter. And in the passage of all living things through birth, growth and death, we notice the possibility of new beginnings. Your words of peace still our hurry. Your story is to be savoured, to fill imaginations, to dream of what is possible. In your peace, your passion for creation is revealed, your love healing the division humanity creates between one another, between heaven and earth. With your woundedness, we are made whole and encouraged to be the witnesses of your continuing purpose in our time. We thank you that you are with us now. Our mouths are full of songs of praise, Lord of life, for you meet every need. Our hunger is fed, our thirst is quenched, your indwelling in the whole of life inspires our thoughts and encourages the gifts within each of us to be used for the glory of your kingdom. Your risen presence provides the sustenance our inner spirits crave. We meet you in the relationships we form, in all we do. May we reveal your presence as we discover old and new ways of being your people. As we offer thanks to Jesus, we also remember for, before God our missteps this week. We pray to you, parent God, loving creator, as your children we are given a place within your heart. You know our inner workings and are able to name what is right and wrong in the lives we lead. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As your children, we recognise upset and hurt we cause to those we love the most, with the harsh words we use and our selfish ambition to live as we would choose. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As your children, we're invited to share in the stewardship of creation and sometimes we fail to care. Tempted by easy to use and readily available, we ignore the need to sustain all of life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As children of God, we are known by you and long for your presence to turn us around with forgiveness. Loving God, we thank you for your touch upon our lives, helping us to walk Christ's path of holiness and love. And now we pray aloud together in the words Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Psalm 4 Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. 
How long, you people, shall my honour suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their green and wine abound. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But what we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have happened there in these days. What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened up the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way 
and how Jesus was recognised them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. A prayer by Dutch theologian Huub Oosterhuis. We anticipate what is not yet and practice now our future with you. We say and sing that all you have made your creation is good. Laboriously, so very slowly, We work out your promise in hope and fear and strive to build a city of peace, a new creation, where you will be our light, our all. Give us strength, O God, to persevere and bring us to a happy end. I love stories with happy endings. I'm one of these people who has to know the film has a happy end before I will watch it, who prefer to have my reading material on the hopeful side. No dystopian futures or wonderfully tragic endings for me, thank you very much. Life can be poignant in its irony or unexpected outcomes, but I like my fiction to be satisfyingly joyful by the end of the story, with everyone getting to live their best lives. But in the real world, in this world today, It feels to many people as if someone somewhere has got the story wrong. For some, it may feel as if they themselves have written a disastrous chapter from which there's no hope of a happy ending. To others, it seems as if some outside agency has grabbed the pencil from their hands and then contrived to ruin a story that looked to be shaping up well. The letters named after John the Apostle were probably written towards the end of the first century, 70 years or so after Christ's death and resurrection. The writer is trying to help the early church distinguish true teaching from false teaching, a problem which has beset the church ever since. True teachers, so the writer says, should have righteousness and love in their lives, and also their ideas about Jesus shouldn't sound too wild. The section from the first letter we heard today talks about recognition and ignorance, righteousness and unrighteousness, justice and injustice, suggesting that the Christian community's real concern should be noticing the difference between the values of the kingdom of God versus the values of the kingdom of this world. The difference between the two kingdoms should be instantly recognisable. We're invited by the writer to think about what our identity as children of God means. Where does that identity merge? Where does it diverge from the identities that are offered by the world? What identity does a child of God have? What does being like God mean? The term children of God reminds us of the community part of our identity. As followers of Christ, we are part of a family. We are in relationship. We have rights and responsibilities because we belong in a church community. As the poet John Donne said, no man is an island. 
Thousands of years of religious tradition encourages us to live as a Christian family, not just locally, but internationally, promoting kingdom values of love and justice and hope for all. To the writer of the letter of John, our identity comes from the love given to us by God. Christ showed God's love to all he was in contact with. We follow his example and share that love with the communities of which we are a part. Our Gospel reading has the wonderful story of Jesus' two followers, possibly Cleopas and his wife, being met by Jesus on the road to Emmaus and not recognising him till they go to share food together. Jesus disappears, but then Jesus appears later that night to the disciples in Jerusalem. In the version of the story we heard today, Jesus eats some food to prove he's still made of flesh and blood, still a real person after his resurrection, not just a ghost or a spirit. Jesus comes to them, eats the food, offers his peace, then tells his disciples that they are about to start witnessing to his resurrection and proclaiming the message of changed lives and forgiveness. The disciples must have alternately felt ecstatic, terrified and just confused. To us in the 21st century, the Easter story is a story with a happy ending. After the terrible tragedy of the crucifixion, the followers of Jesus are led into the joy of the resurrection, of Jesus returning to them, of Jesus promising a new way of living for them all. But to Jesus' followers at the time, it couldn't have seemed so clear cut. For many people in our world today, there isn't a lot of good news about. Individually, we probably all know folk whose life stories don't look like they are about to have a happy chapter. Internationally, there are whole peoples whose stories' endings are looking decidedly unhappy. Jesus' followers had assumed that the Jesus part of their story was over, a sad end after a promising beginning, but there was a twist in the plot line. And we have the power to provide alternative endings and twists to so many of the stories going on in the world today. Keep praying, keep informed, keep listening to Jesus as we move through Easter Tide into the next chapter of our story. Because just like Jesus' friends on that walk home to Emmaus, just like his followers met together cooking their tea, just like the fishermen who returned to Galilee to go back to work, we are starting our new chapters. And just as happened to them, Jesus offers to be with us, co-authoring what happens next. We anticipate what is not yet and practice now our future with you. We say and sing that all you have made your creation is good. Laboriously, so very slowly, we work out your promise in hope and fear and strive to build a city of peace, a new creation, where you will be our light, our all. Give us strength, O oh God, to persevere and bring us to a happy end.
confident of God's grace towards each one of us and all creation, confident that the Christ desires the best for all, we bring before Christ now people in all kinds of need. Let us pray. Risen Christ, your living presence is celebrated all over this world by those in need of healing and those who are amazed in hearts and minds. In moments of wonder and unexpected changes, we sometimes suddenly we see you standing in our midst, speaking words of peace and inspiring your world to discover the possibility of the kingdom of heaven in the ordinary of the world. Help us to enjoy our moments of wonder. In a world where explanation and logic could chip away at faith, may we marvel at the growing knowledge of science and the wonder it creates, from starlit skies to molecules and atoms, giving intimate knowledge of a creation so full of opportunities. Thrill us with the mystery of what we are yet to know, so that it expands our desire to notice you in unexpected ways and places. In the medical emergencies and plagues in our world, we give thanks for all those who have offered signs of resurrection in their work and commitment. We pray for doctors, nurses and support staff who tirelessly care for those who enter their view, at times with potential harm to themselves. We pray for the scientific community as it continues research and development in care and prevention. We pray for those who are the recipients of care and pray for the wide range of people whose health has been affected by being unable to receive treatment and support. Help us to notice those communities who will be the last to receive the support they need and to work towards the fairer share of wealth and resources. We pray with suffering peoples around the world whose only plea is that they be allowed to live in peace with food to eat and a roof over their head. We think of the peoples of Yemen, of Sudan and South Sudan, of the Ukraine and of Palestine. And we pray with the Christians of Palestine. God of inclusivity, Jerusalem is known to be a holy city but sadly it has become a city of hatred and supremacy. Christians in Palestine, the living stone of God's city, are appalled by the attempt to promote Jewish supremacy over all other faiths, a policy supported by Christian Zionists, and ask for the strength to resist such op oppression. We in the wider world give you thanks, God, for the Palestinian church which has a living, prophetic tradition of theology and leadership. May we all pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Christ of life and death and resurrection, we celebrate those who have shared this life with us, allowing us to meet you in simple words and actions. We grieve with those who mourn the death of loved ones. May we be those who share the memories and love that allows hope to rise from loss. We ask these prayers in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, it's been a privilege to share worship with you. This week, may we know the love of God with us and we may, may we share that love with those around us. And now a blessing. Christ is risen in our world, alive in our hearts, our conversations and our activities. May we as Christ's people share his good news to all. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>